Today I wanted to tackle 20 questions in the form of like a Q&A. I've got a lot of questions from mainly Instagram. Decided instead of doing this in the office to get out, drive a little bit, gives me an excuse to get out. I've been doing meetings all day, so it's a welcome excuse to get in the car and drive. So the first question is, how do you make a living? And I guess this is a good one to start off on. What do I do? So I'm a freelance creative based out of Tokyo. I make content for other brands and I also make content for my own social platforms. I guess you could call me a photographer slash videographer. There's two primary ways that I make a living. The first is shooting content for brands. Um, I guess an example of this would be like the recent Bape shoot that we did for their Bapesa collection. It's making assets or deliverables for brands. They'll come to me asking for photos or videos for social media or just like on their, their web to promote products and I'll go ahead and get briefs. I'll create the, the assets or the, the creative deliverables back and forth, send them to them and then the brands will pay me. Uh, kind of like a production fee or like a, just like a fee for usage of the assets. The other way that I make money is for my own social platforms and this is like sponsored content for Instagram, Reels, photos or sponsor content for this YouTube channel, uh, which is rare, but hopefully that increases a little bit. The final way that I make money, it's like a, if I were to put it into percentages, branded content for other brands, 70%, content for my own personal socials is like 20, 25%, and then like the final five to 10% is stuff that I sell on my, my website. So like presets, the recent transition pack that I made, um, just like digital deliverables. So that's kind of like a breakdown of, of what I do now. How did you get your first video slash photo job? Uh, well, I've been taking photos for, let's see, since, Jesus, a long time, like 15 years. I had a really good mentor in high school and slash middle school that kind of just taught me the basics of photo and then also video. In terms of the first professional job, I think after I moved to Tokyo, um, the first job I had was for a company called Echo and we did like a series of photos and kind of like GIF deliverables. The way that I got that is that someone reached out to me. They saw that I was posting, I was experimenting a lot at that time with like 3D GIFs and they saw that I posted like 3D GIFs of people and they said, hey, it'd be cool if you did these GIFs with our product for a new collection. And that was kind of like how I got that first job. And that was 2019, I think, maybe 2020. Um, and that was kind of like the first big professional job that I had. Do you work as a team or yourself only? So, I mean, this video is myself only. A lot of YouTube stuff is myself only, but for photo slash video projects, I usually do just myself and then maybe like an assistant shooter. Um, my buddy Shimon helps me a lot in the stills a lot of times. Um, for bigger productions, I'll hire maybe more of my friends or just people that I know in general in Tokyo. I think the biggest crew that I've like assigned, is like I don't know, like 10, 10 people max, just in terms of all the various roles. So, just depends, depends on the project. If it's like a big project where I need a lot of models and a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts, I'll have people come on, I'll pay them. If not, I'll just do it myself. I'm not a production agency, I'm not a company. That's just how we, we've been rolling. Hey, my question is, how do you get brands to notice your work? I'd say the majority of my work that I get hit up for comes through email. So I have kind of like a funnel where people who are on my social accounts, they'll go to my, I think it's a, Bento Me now. Bento Me is really cool. I'm not sponsored by them, but they're a pretty cool website where it's like an alternative to Linktree. Uh, they'll go to that, go to my website, hit on my contact page. The other way is through Instagram DMs, um, but I try to just like handle most of it through through email. But to find my work on social media, uh, or it'll be referral. So I'll have worked with somebody in the past where I've shot for somebody that they know, or I've shot them for a different job. Maybe I've shot a model for somebody. They'll see my work. They'll know how I work and then they'll reach out to me and say, hey, we have this project, we'd like you to come on as either the photographer, videographer, creative director, whatever, and it's a referral system. So it's either just kind of like cold reach out via mainly Instagram or TikTok, and then either way it's like through a referral system. Do you do more professional video shoots or photo shoots? I would say the majority of my work is probably more video based. I think most people reach out to me because they've seen my videos. Obviously on Instagram, TikTok, most social media platforms are like pushing video content more. But a lot of times I'll go ahead and during like the, the discussion or sort of the collaborative like brief, I'll pitch, say, hey, we'll do these 30 second cut down videos, but we'll also, I'll throw in some stills, some photography, just sort of like 
as like a package deal. And so more and more, we've been doing sort of like a combined video and photo asset delivery to brands. Which one do I prefer shooting? I actually prefer, I don't know. I think I enjoy both. I do like taking photos. So. I think I enjoy photo shoots more actually, but I think I'm better at creating videos. There's so many amazing photographers and I think video or at least like short form video is more of like a wild west scenario where people are just kind of like emerging and finding their own styles. And so I think that's where like maybe I do a little bit better in terms of like getting my work out there. The competition for photography is like incredible. There's so many better photographers than I am. So I don't know. In terms of work, I definitely feel like I get more video work than photo work. What or who are the photographers that inspire you? Well, that's a good one. I think in no particular order, the three that stand out. Number one is Liam McRae. I think Liam is an incredible photographer. His Portfolio speaks for itself. The reason why I like Liam is one of the first pieces I saw by him was, it was actually a video piece, it was a documentary piece. I don't know if he shot it or directed it, but an interview editorial piece on Toro. And I thought the piece was just incredible. It was, uh, it really sparked a lot of interest for me into video, but after kind of like researching his work in particular, especially with his Stussy campaigns he's been doing for a long time, the relationship he has with Stussy and it's developing like a specific style that, that really, connects to a brand's core and have a team trust you that much to really lead and just continuously season after season lead such creative work is is really inspiring i think liam i think joe greer joe is just crazy vibes but also his street photography is something that i love taking inspiration from especially in tokyo and a lot of his work from new york is something that I really admire and his way of capturing emotion in cities is something that I also strive to do in my work in Tokyo and that is one of the reasons why I wanted to move to a big city. Another OG, one of my favorites of all time is Ellie, Vision Ellie as he used to be known, now just Ellie on Instagram. He's been, hasn't posted as much, I'm sure he's doing a lot of commercial work, hasn't posted as much on Instagram as back in the day, but him and also shout out to Uncle Taku, Taku Beats, those two guys, especially in like the Create Explore era, mid mid 2010s, like really early IG days. I think their work was always super inspirational. The tones I drew a lot of inspiration from. I learned a lot about composition. And Ellie, I loved his work with uh, the BTS on Black Panther as a photographer, that was incredible. Those three guys, they're some of my favorite photographers. How do you edit your videos? Well, primarily I use Premiere Pro. That's like my editing software of choice but recently I've been kind of like trying to learn how to color grade better. And I've been using a lot of DaVinci Resolve, but I still like to cut and edit my videos in Premiere Pro. I don't really use After Effects very often. I think After Effects is, I don't know, it's hard, just hard. I'm like, I primarily learned all of my editing through the Adobe software on Photoshop. So Premiere Pro is just like such a similar kind of like workflow. It's a lot easier for me to use Premiere Pro. And I know it's not the best for color. So that's why I like to edit the first edit in Premiere Pro color grade it in DaVinci, then bring it back, add effects, and call it a day after that. find it hard to find new inspiration slash ideas with such a saturated market out there. I don't think the market is as saturated. I mean, this might be this might be a controversial like stance. I don't think the market is as saturated as people make it out to be. I think if you're only going to Instagram or I, mean, I guess the main source is Instagram. If you're only going to Instagram to find inspiration for photos or videos, one thing I like to do is find old advertising campaigns in print. So in Japan, there's like a lot of uh, resources that have old Japanese magazines or even like old posters or old signs that are still up. It's an incredible way to find different posing and just different lighting techniques to highlight products and models. So even when I'm out just driving or exploring or not really trying to think too much about work per se, I'm always looking and keeping an eye out for interesting signs, interesting places that can sort of trigger inspiration. I'm always looking around in terms of settings. Wherever I go, maybe this place would look cool with a photo shoot in the future or especially for like street photography, stuff like that. Favorite nudie song? Definitely Sunflower Seeds.
I worry my creative work is too repetitive. Do you feel like this sometimes when filming or taking shots? If you attack every project the same way, then I feel like the work that you produce will become repetitive. And that's just, uh, that's just how, how work becomes, I think. I think that's the point where you need to sort of evaluate what you're trying to recreate, what your purpose is in trying to recreate the specific work. So one thing I like to do after shoots in order to avoid keeping things repetitive, avoid keeping things at a, like a level where I'm not satisfied with the work, I'll go ahead and sit down and sort of just like make a list, pen and paper, of things that I really enjoyed doing about the shoot, things that worked well, and then I'll make a list of things that I didn't like, things that I think I can improve on, and reasons why I feel like this work isn't something that's really pushing me to improve. Every time that I'm working on a project, I always wanna learn something, and that way that kind of keeps me on my toes, keeps it interesting, keeps me engaged, and keeps like work, I don't know, fun. So I don't know, I just try to do that list, try to make sure that I'm always learning something or trying something new, and that keeps it from getting too stale. How did you transition to photography slash creative work as a full-time job? So I only went full-time freelance creative work, I think in the last year and a half, two years, actually probably like a year and a half. I moved to Tokyo about three or four years ago, and that's when a lot of my creative professional work really picked up. But until recently, I would have a part-time job as well as do creative projects on the side. And recently, luckily, very thankful that I've been able to transition fully into just creative work. And it has its ups and downs, but if it's something that you're worried about doing, first of all, financially, I wouldn't jump straight into like full-time creative work, uh, especially in my case, I don't have like monthly retainers where I do projects for companies over a certain extended amount of time. I do like solely project-based work. And I wouldn't say it's the most stable in terms of both job regularity and also like mental stability, which I enjoy. I enjoy sort of like running at this point in my life. I enjoy searching for the next job and, and trying to like promote myself and market myself and that sort of thing. So it's definitely like a hustle sort of like mentality slash if you don't find jobs, then you don't have income, which isn't for everybody. And so if you're somebody that perhaps, let's say that you're trying to, to get into full-time freelance, I would, my personal advice would be not to jump into it until you're confident enough in finding enough work where you wouldn't have to worry too much about like, at least like rent or just like daily necessity costs to live per month. I don't know, some people jump into it, some people don't. I'm, uh, I'm thankful that I'm able to do it right now, but it's not like a guaranteed thing every month. So, you know, that's life. How do you feed your creativity? Feed my creativity. I have a list on my phone of things that, kind of like back to the previous question, but like things that I've saved and like references that I want to like emulate or try. And I just have like a list of things that I, I want to make at all times. And I'm always just like adding to that list as I'm like walking around or on my phone scrolling, things I like is just screenshots or things I just write down. And I just have that list of stuff. So whenever I kind of like am not in a rut, but, but I have like time to go out and try new things, I just have a list of things that I want to go try. And that kind of helps me not sit around and think about what I want to try. It kind of just gives me a motivating push to go out and try these things that I think are cool. I'm in a weird position where I love photography, but I also do photography as a job. So it's both my hobby and my income source. So I feel like I'm always just looking at things through a photographic eye where I wonder if this angle or this location could look good in the next campaign or, or something like that. So I don't know. How hard is it to get a work visa in Japan slash are you a citizen? So A, yes, I am a citizen. I'm a uh, dual national US and Japan. In terms of how difficult it is to get a work visa, I'm not really sure because of that reason. I've heard it's really hard. Uh, a couple of my friends work for companies that they sponsor you, but you can also, I think, self-sponsor if you make like a certain amount of income. I don't know, probably not the best person to ask about that. But yeah, I'm Japanese, so I don't worry about a visa because Japan is my home. Is there anything you feel helped you vastly improve your photo and video work. I think it's just a sense of being analytical, both on your own personal work and then other work that you see. Just figuring out reasons why you like certain photos, why you like certain videos. Maybe there's certain transitions that you like, or perhaps the sound design is amazing for video. And then for photo, perhaps it's the lighting, perhaps it's the setting, it's the modeling posing. I think just having that sense of being uber analytical, not in a bad way, 
because you have to be critical about your own work, but critical about others' work in both a positive and critical way that allows you to better your own work and not just better it by becoming, let's say, vaguely a better photographer, vaguely a better videographer, or perhaps want to be like somebody, but taking elements from different people's work and incorporating it into your own work and developing your own style, et cetera, et cetera, just getting better at certain things. So one thing that I want to improve on this year personally is external lighting in environmental portraiture. So that's one thing that I've been doing a lot of research on. I've been studying a lot of portraits and I've bought some things that hopefully I'll make some YouTube videos here shortly. Um, and just stuff that I want to learn more and improve myself on. Favorite film format slash camera duo? Ooh, I have two. The first is the Mamiya 645 AFD medium format. And that I'm always shooting Kodak Gold 200. I like the color of it. And then for 35 mil, it's probably the Contax G2 currently with the 28 mil lens and then Kodak Ultramax 400. How do you avoid burnout? I also do a lot of things that don't necessarily involve photography or videography. I like cooking a lot. I like going on runs. I like playing soccer in my free time. I have a lot recently just because we've been busy, but just finding time to do stuff that's not necessarily like super creative or finding other mediums. I like to read as well. There are ways to avoid creative burnout. And then I think one big major thing for me is that I'm blessed, but also I'm in a position where like, I don't have to take on every job that I'm offered. And so certain jobs just don't sound fun. The deliverables aren't great or the pay's not great or the relationship is just isn't something that you wanna foster. I'm thankful that I also get other work where I do enjoy doing or I do enjoy working in like those sort of relationships and I'll say yes to those kind of jobs. So typically I kind of stray away from jobs that'll add a lot of stress to my life. Um, that's just from personal experience. Like I've done jobs where I either hate the end result or just don't enjoy the working conditions or you know, there's a multitude of reasons why you don't enjoy doing certain projects. I think having that freedom is such a big blessing and I don't take it for granted, but that's something that has helped me avoid a certain amount of burnout just because I don't have to take those kind of jobs on. How do you think AI will change the media industry? Well, A, I think AI is already rapidly changed the media industry. In the obvious ways of like content creation in terms of creating videos and photos with like the Runway app or different tools that'll create visual imagery, like that's directly affecting my work because now there are, there are other ways than perhaps hiring me to create imagery for campaigns. So that's obviously one way that it's affecting my job. I think there's two camps of people. There's people that absolutely hate AI and are absolutely against it. And then there's people who embrace it and grow with it. I I think this is almost, or probably even more, kind of similar to like when the internet came about. People didn't like the internet, what it did for media in terms of it taking away jobs or the way that things were done throughout history, or at least the, the previous like 20, 30 years of history. I think the way that you work is gonna change. I think the faster that you adapt and embrace AI and utilize it within your workflow, I think the further along you're gonna get and I think it's a great time to learn tools that people haven't really been using and really build a skill set that can be invaluable in the next few years and from time to come. So, how would you build a portfolio slash monetize your work if you were just starting out in 2023? Let's just do a really simple example here. I think in the creative field of work where you're trying to get gigs, I think the number one thing that you can use to your advantage and the number one thing that you should build is your portfolio. It's very rare that people hire you based off of what you could produce. It's more along the lines of referencing stuff that you've already made and seeing how what you can make will fit into a brand or a client or someone who's trying to purchase what you're making. So if I wanted to go and shoot sneakers, I want to shoot models, what I would do right now is I would go and I'd get a bunch of friends or get friends who are, they don't have to be models, and I'd just create a lot of work that is in the same essence of the type of work that you're trying to get hired for. It wouldn't make sense if I was trying to shoot Nike sneakers to go about and shoot I don't know, like landscape film photography. You know what I mean? Like that just, the, to a certain degree, when you're first starting out, I think it's more beneficial if you're trying to land gigs to do the sort of work that you're trying to get hired for. And A, not only one will you build your portfolio, but B, you'll get much better at the craft of what you're doing. So if you're trying to get better photography, then that specific style of photography and your directing skills and the way you interact with people and just learning the trade, I think that's invaluable stuff that you can do right off the bat to build a portfolio, get better at what you're doing, create work, and that work will then be referenced for when somebody reaches out to you and says, hey, I want you to make this for my brand. I want you to hypothetically create these photos in this fashion, or I know from your previous work that you can do it, so I'm gonna pay you money 
to go about and do this for my brand or my work or whatever type of work that you're doing. This can be applicable to any sort of like photo or video work or even like 3D design, graphics. I think anything in general is, this is kind of like a way that you can start off and, and find work pretty quickly. Oh, and do a lot of free work. Do free work in the beginning. I think that's the most important thing. I don't think you should worry about getting paid for a certain amount of money for the first works that you do. Everybody has to start somewhere. Get your work out, get it done well. You'll get experience, you'll learn a lot, and you'll eventually land the jobs that guarantee the ones that you're most interested in doing. What's one goal for this year that you want to achieve? This year, I think one of my big goals is I would love to be published in a big magazine for my photography. Um, steps that I'm taking to achieve this goal are I'm trying to develop my own portfolio. A lot of my portfolio on Instagram at least is fashion related and it's a lot of like on the street sort of environmental stuff. I would like to learn more about lighting, kind of fixed lighting, work with flash, work with strobe lights, really shoot or compelling environmental portraiture that can be produced for campaigns and printed in works in big magazines. I think that's one of my uh, my big goals this year. And the final question, when are you launching Oats and Brains film? Specifically, Brainwave film. And I haven't really talked about this much, but we have developed a film stock that's called Brainwave. The Instagram for it is at Oats and Brains. And in terms of like timeline, I think pretty soon. We're, we've got a large stock of it. We're just trying to figure out how to sell it, how to market it. And it's not something that I'm like really pressed for time-wise. Keep an eye out for it, follow the Instagram page, stay tuned. It will be available for release soon. And we also have some cool merch for it too. So that'll be coming to you shortly. All right, so that wraps up this edition of Q&A. Appreciate you guys listening to the very end. Go ahead and follow Oats and Brains on Instagram and stay tuned to this channel. We got more content coming soon.